and we go outside because our shelter is in the garage and we look up and we see it going over our house. No warning. Many in Quapaw say they didn't know a tornado was barreling down on their town until it was just too late. Two News went straight to the National Weather Service to ask the tough questions. Two News reporter Dan Perlman live in the Weather Service tonight with answers, Dan. Well, Russ, this is the building where every single watch or warning we receive comes from. On Sunday, Quapaw didn't receive a warning, and meteorologists here are calling that a worst-case scenario. Steve Pilts, meteorologist in charge inside the operations area at the National Weather Service. Today, he showed me Sunday's radar over Quapaw. It wasn't producing wind, it wasn't producing hail, it didn't have a, a sustained rotation in it. That is why he tells me the Ottawa County town never got a warning, but things did change and they changed quickly. See, tornadoes generally form thousands of feet up. This one took shape much lower and that spells trouble. But when they form basically in the cloud base first, then and they're essentially beginning to do damage almost as, as soon as the circulation forms. That happened right over Quapaw. So it, it becomes kind of a worst case scenario where it's forming near the ground first and it's basically forming in a town. Pilt says the tornado touched down at 532. By 535, the Weather Service issued a warning for Baxter Springs. On average, he tells me tornado warnings are issued 15 minutes before touchdown. But this is one case where no radar or spotter could predict what was coming. In the one hand, it's, you know, it's just unacceptable to have tornadoes where we can't issue a warning. But on the, and on the flip side of it, sometimes we just can't. Now, Pilts tells me he and his team will look at everything that happened on Sunday so they can improve for next time. Live in East Tulsa, Dan Perlman, 2 News, works for you. All right, Dan, going in depth now from the Weather Center, Brett has some insight as to why Quapaw had no warning. Well, when we come to tornado warnings, we're looking for winds coming toward the radar and winds going away mm -hmm. from the radar. We'll take a look at here. This is Storm Shield radar, and what I'm measuring here is the wind shear. So we're looking at that difference in the winds going toward the radar and away from the radar. Remember, it started at 529. This radar here shows 530, and we have very little signature at all on our radar screen near, near Quapaw. Now I go ahead about five minutes ahead into 535 and what we should see here in the next frame if it comes up, it wasn't when we were practicing, uh, when it comes up, there it is. Now you can see a distinct signature and that looks like a hook echo right there to the southwest side of Quapaw, but it was already doing damage by that point at 535 and then it went on up into Baxter Springs. So you can see it just in a matter of minutes went from nothing to a tornado and that's what Steve Pilts was talking about how it formed near the ground right over a town so pretty tough to pick that one out but I'm sure in the future we'll be ready we'll have those tornado warnings for you as we keep you safe this spring.